Honorable Speaker, I would now move to part B of my speech. Honorable Speaker, the world is facing a serious challenge of the pandemic and its aftershock. In these trying times, when many economies are struggling to revive, our people and our industry have exhibited remarkable resilience. As I mentioned already, post-pandemic, a new world order seems to be emerging, one in which Asia is poised to occupy a prominent position, and India will have a leading role therein. In this scenario, our tax system has to be transparent, efficient, and should promote investments and employment in our country. At the same time, it should put minimum burden on our taxpayers. I borrow the words of Thiruvalluvar, the saint. Yetranam, eetalam, kaastalam, kaasta vaguttalam, nalla valladarasu. A king or a ruler is the one who creates and acquires wealth, protects and distributes it for common good. Sirukur. Direct tax proposals. Keeping this in mind, the words of Tirukkural, our government introduced a series of reforms in the direct tax system for the benefit of our taxpayers and the economy. Few months prior to the pandemic, in order to attract investments, we slashed our corporate tax, corporate tax rate to make it among the lowest in the world. The dividend distribution tax, too, was abolished. The burden of taxation on small taxpayers was eased by increasing rebates. In 2020, the return filers saw a dramatic increase to 6.48 crores from 3.31 crores in 2014. In the direct tax administration, we had recently introduced the faceless assessment and faceless appeal. I now seek to take further steps to simplify the tax administration, ease compliance, and reduce litigation. Relief to senior citizens. I begin my direct tax proposals by offering my pranam to our senior citizens. Many of them, despite having foregone several basic necessities of their own, have strived to build our nation. Now in the 75th year of independence of our country, when we continue our endeavor with renewed vigor, we shall reduce compliance burden on our senior citizens who are 75 years of age and above. For senior citizens who only have pension and interest income, I propose exemption from filing their income tax return. The paying bank will deduct the necessary tax on their income. Reduction in time for income tax proceedings. This is a very key announcement, if you, if you are asking. Honorable Speaker, presently an assessment can be reopened up to six years and in serious tax fraud cases for up to 10 years. As a result, taxpayers have to remain under uncertainty for a very long time. I therefore propose to reduce this time limit for reopening of assessments to three years from the present six years. In serious tax evasion cases too, only where there is only only where there is evidence of concealment of income of fifty lakh or more in a year. In serious tax evasion cases too, only where there is evidence of concealment of income of 50 lakh or more in a year can the assessment be reopened up to 10 years. Even this reopening can be done only after the approval of the principal chief commissioner, the highest level of income tax department. Setting up the dispute resolution committee. Honorable Speaker, 
It has been the resolve of this government to reduce litigation, which masks the present taxation system. The government came out with the direct taxation Vibhatse Vishwa scheme to give taxpayers an opportunity to settle long pending disputes and be relieved to further strain on their time and resources. The response from taxpayers has been the best ever as over 1,10,000 taxpayers have already opted to settle tax disputes of over 85,000 crores under the scheme. To further reduce litigation for small taxpayers, I propose to constitute a dispute resolution committee for them, which will be faceless to ensure efficiency, transparency and accountability. Anyone with a taxable income up to 50 lakh and disputed income up to 10 lakh shall be eligible to approach the committee. Faceless ITAT. For ease of compliance and to reduce discretion, we are committed to make the taxation processes faceless. The government has already introduced faceless assessment and appeal this year. The next level of income tax appeal is the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. I now propose to make this tribunal faceless. We shall establish a national faceless Income Tax Appellate Tribunal Center. All communication between the tribunal and the appellant shall be electronic. Where personal hearing is needed, it shall be done through video conferencing. Relaxations to NRI. When non-resident Indians return to India, they have issues with respect to their accrued incomes in their foreign retirement accounts. This is usually due to mismatch in taxation period. They also face difficulties in getting credit for Indian taxes in foreign jurisdictions. I propose to notify rules for removing their hardship of double taxation. Exemption from audit. Currently, if your turnover exceeds one crore, you have to get your accounts audited. In February 2020 budget, I had increased the limit for tax audit to five crores for those who carry out 95% of their transactions digitally to further incentivize digital transactions and to reduce compliance burden. I propose to increase this limit for tax audit for such persons from 5 crores to 10 crores. Relief for dividend. In the previous budget, I had abolished the dividend distribution tax in order to incentivize investment. Dividend was made taxable in the hands of shareholders. Now, in order to provide ease of compliance, I propose to make dividend payment to rate and in which exempt from TDS. Further, as the amount of dividend income cannot be estimated correctly by the shareholders for paying advance tax, I propose to provide the advance that I propose to provide that advance tax liability on dividend income shall arise only after the declaration or payment of dividend. Also, for the foreign portfolio investors, I propose to enable deduction of tax on dividend income at lower treaty rate. Attracting foreign investment into infrastructure sector. In the last budget, for attracting foreign investment in the infrastructure sector, we had granted 100% tax exemption subject to certain conditions to foreign sovereign wealth funds and pension funds on their income from investment in, in, in Indian infrastructure. We have noticed that few of such funds are facing difficulties in meeting some of the uh, conditions. In order to ensure that a large number of funds invest in India, I propose to relax some of these conditions relating to prohibition on private funding restriction on commercial activities, and direct investment in infrastructure. In order to allow funding of infrastructure by issue of zero coupon bonds, I propose to make notified infrastructure debt funds 
eligible to raise funds by issuing tax-efficient zero-coupon bonds. Affordable housing affordable housing and rental housing. This government sees housing for all and affordable housing as priority areas. In July 2019 budget, I provided an additional deduction of interest amounting to 1.5 lakh for loan taken to purchase an affordable house. I propose to extend the eligibility of this condition by one more year to 31st March 2022. The additional deduction of 1.5 lakh shall therefore be available for loans taken up to 31st March 2022 for the purchase of affordable houses. Further, to keep up the supply of affordable houses, I propose that the affordable housing projects can avail a tax holiday for one more year till 31st March, 31st March 2022. These are available now for projects also. We are committed to promote supply of affordable rental housing for migrant workers. For this, I propose to allow tax exemption for notified affordable rental housing projects. Tax incentives to IFSC. As I mentioned in Part A of the speech, the government is committed to making the International Financial Services Centre in Gibbs City a global financial hub. In addition to the tax incentives already provided, I propose to include, among others, tax holiday for capital gains for aircraft leasing companies, tax exemption for aircraft lease rentals paid to foreign lessors, tax incentive for relocating foreign funds in the IFSC, and to allow tax exemption to the investment division of foreign banks located in the IFSC. Pre-filling of returns. Honorable Speaker, in order to ease compliance for the taxpayer, details of salary income, tax payments, TDS, etc., already come pre-filled in income tax returns. To further ease filing of returns, details of capital gains from listed securities, dividend income, and interest from banks, post office, etc., will also be now pre-filled. Relief to small trusts. We hope to reduce compliance burden on small charitable trusts running educational institutions and hospitals. So far, there is a blanket exemption to such entities whose annual receipt does not exceed 1 crore of rupees. I now propose to increase this amount to 5 crores. <laughs> Labor welfare. We have noticed that some employers deduct the contribution of employees toward provident funds, superannuation funds, and other social security funds, but do not deposit these contributions within the specified time. For these employees, this means a loss of interest or income. In cases where an employer later becomes financially unviable, non-deposit results in a permanent loss for the employees. In order to ensure that employees' contributions are deposited on time, I reiterate that the late deposit of employees' contribution by the employer will not be allowed as deduction to the employer. Incentives for startups. In order to incentivize startups in the country, I propose to extend the eligibility of, for claiming tax holiday for startups by one more year, till 31st March 2022. Further, in order to incentivize funding for the startups, I propose to extend the capital gains exemption for investment in startups by one more year, till 31st March 2022. Sir, so I now come to indirect tax proposals, GST. 
Before I come to my indirect tax proposals, I would like to appraise the House on GST. The GST is now four years old, and we have taken several measures to further simplify it. Some of the measures include nil return through SMS, quarterly return and monthly payment of, for small taxpayers, electronic invoice system, validated input tax statements, pre-filled editable GST return, and staggering of returns filing. The capacity of GST and system has also been enhanced. We have also deployed deep analytics and artificial intelligence to identify tax ev evaders and fake billers and launched special drives against them. The results speak for themselves. We have made record collections in the last few months. The GST Council has painstakingly thrashed out thorny issues. As chairperson to the Council, I want to assure this House that we shall take every possible measure to smoothen the GST further and to remove anomalies such as inverted duty structure. Custom duty rationalization. Our custom duty policy should have the twin objective of promoting domestic manufacturing and helping India get on to global value chain and export better. The thrust now has to be on easy access to raw materials and exports of value-added products. Towards this, last year, we started overhauling the a customs duty structure, eliminating 80 outdated exemptions. I also thank everyone who responded overwhelmingly to a crowdsourcing call for suggestions on this revamp. I now propose to review more than 400 old, exem sorry, 400 old exemptions this year. I repeat, I now propose to review more than 400 old exemptions this year. We will conduct this through extensive con consultations and from 1st October 2021, we will put in place a revised customs duty structure free of distortions. I also propose that any new customs duty exemptions, therefore, henceforth, will have validity up to 31st March, following two years from the date of the issue. Electronic and mobile phone industry. Domestic electronic manufacturing has grown rapidly. We are now exporting items like mobiles and chargers. For greater domestic value addition, we are withdrawing a few exemptions on part of chargers and subparts of mobiles. Further, some parts of mobiles will move from nil rate to a moderate 2.5 percent. Iron and steel. MSMEs and other user industries have been severely hit by a recent sharp rise in iron and steel prices. Therefore, we are reducing customs duty uniformly to 7.5% on semis, flats, and long products of non-alloy, alloy, and stainless steels to provide relief to metal recyclers, mostly MSMEs, I'm exempting duty on steel scrap for a period up to 31st March 2022. Further, I'm also revoking ADD and CBD on certain steel products. Also, to provide relief to copper recyclers, I'm reducing duty on copper scrap from 5% to 2.5%. Textiles. The textile sector generates employment and contributes significantly to the economy. There is a need to rationalize duties on raw material inputs to man-made textiles. We are now bringing nylon chain on par with polyester and other man-made fibers. We are uniformly reducing the BCD rates on caprolactam nylon chips, nylon fiber, and yarn to 5%. This will help the textile industry, MSMEs, and also overall exports.
chemicals. We have calibrated customs duty rates on chemicals to encourage domestic value addition and to remove inversions. Apart from other items, we are reducing customs duty on NAFTA to 2.5% to correct inversion. Gold and silver presently attract a basic customs duty of 12.5% since the duty was raised from 10% in July 19. Prices of precious metals have risen sharply. To bring it closer to previous levels, we are rationalizing customs duty on gold and silver. Renewable energy. In Part A, we have already acknowledged that solar energy has huge promise for India. To build up domestic capacity, we will notify a phased manufacturing plan for solar cells and solar panels. At present, to encourage domestic production, we are raising duty on solar inverters from 5% to 20% and on solar lanterns from 5% to 15%. <clears throat> Capital equipment and auto parts. There is immense potential in manufacturing heavy capital equipment domestically. We will comprehensively review the rate structure in due course. However, we are revising duty rates on certain items immediately. We propose to withdraw exemptions on tunnel boring machine. It will attract a customs duty of 7.5% and its parts a duty of 2.5%. We are raising customs duty on certain auto parts to 15% to bring them on par with general rate on auto parts. MSME products. We are proposing certain changes to benefit MSMEs. We are increasing duty from 10 to 15% on steel screws and plastic builder wares. On prawn feed, we increase it from 5 to 15%. We are rationalizing exemption on import of duty-free items as an incentive to exporters of garments, leather, and handicraft items. Almost all of these items are made domestically by our MSMEs. We are withdrawing exemption on imports of certain kinds of leathers as they are domestically produced in good quantity and quality, mostly by MSMEs. We are also raising customs duty on finished synthetic gemstones to encourage domestic processing. Agriculture products. To benefit farmers, we are raising customs duty on cotton from nil to 10%, on raw silk and silk yarn from 10 to 15%. We are also withdrawing end use based concession on denatured ethyl alcohol. Currently, rates are being uniformly calibrated to 15% on items like maize, bran, rice bran, oil cake, and animal feed additives. There is an immediate need to improve agricultural infrastructure so that we produce more while also conserving and processing agricultural output efficiently. This will ensure enhanced remuneration for our farmers. To earmark resources for this purpose, I propose an agricultural infrastructure and development set on a small number of items. However, while I'm applying this set, we have taken care not to put additional burden on consumers on most items. Rationalization of procedures and easing of compliance. For the judicious application, we propose certain changes in the provisioning related to ADD anti-dumping duty and CBD countervailing duty levies. To complete customs investigation, we are prescribing definite timelines. In 2020, we rolled out the Turant Customs Initiative which brought in faceless, paperless, and contactless customs measures. With effect from September 2020, we have implemented a new procedure for administration of rules of origin. This has helped in putting a check on misuse of FTAs. The specific details of direct and indirect tax changes proposed, listed, uh, proposed are listed in the annexure to my speech. Honorable Speaker, sir, with these words, I commend the budget to the